Hi guys, welcome to the Citizen Channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. Please, if you are new to this channel, please push that subscribe button. We do everything city past and present here on these little vlogs, so I do try and inform and entertain. And there's some links on screen as well for Facebook and Twitter where I do post loads of city stuff. So if you follow a friend me on there, I do check every few days and follow a friend everyone back. And if you do get a chance, please have a check out my uh, film and TV channel as well, uh, which I try and inform and entertain on there and all the latest films and TV drama here in the UK and from around the world. So if you can check that out, that will be fantastic. Anyway, hope you enjoy today's feature. Welcome back, yeah, to uh, Dream Debuts or Dream Home Debuts, as is the case with this one, where we're having a look at uh, the Boyhood City fan, uh, Mark Lillis. And with uh, please, if you're not checked out part one, please go and have a look at that. Please, it le leads us into this part two nicely. And just before we do carry on, uh, and if you've not watched part one, go and watch it. But I left you a little teaser from part one, didn't I? Asking, obviously, these three new signings... Uh, that I've got in the background there, and I wanted to know, obviously, uh, obviously one of them is Mark Lillis, of course, from the start of the 85-86 season. Uh, but could you recognise the other two? Yeah, well, the one, on the one at the bottom, obviously the B, the BG sort of clone look-alike, is obviously Mr Sammy McElroy, isn't it? But uh, I think that was a little bit easier. But the other one, the one at the top, yeah, the, the one at the top, uh, came from Rotherham, uh, remember, uh, Nigel Johnson. So well done if you got that anyway. I, I had no chance whatsoever unless I looked it up. I didn't know who he was. I couldn't remember him or anything. I watched him play, of course, but uh, I couldn't remember much about him anyway. That's, uh, that sorts that out. Right, let's get back to Mark Lillis, yeah. He finally, finally had his dream of starting a game. As I said, he was on schoolboy forms. He didn't, didn't work out, obviously, with City. He went over to Huddersfield, but... Obviously, he came back for the 85-86 season. Uh, so, he has still had his chance now. He played at Highfield Road, uh, made his debut Highfield Road for the City first team. But, obviously, his home debut uh, was going to be in front of the Kipax, of course, where he'd stood and supported City with, the, with his mates in the past. It was City's second match in the Canon League Division 1 at that time. Yes, Canon League Division 1. And a crowd of 25,528, including me. Yes, I was stood on the Kipak set that night. Would witness uh, an interesting main road debut. Not the greatest game, don't get me wrong, but an interesting main road debut for uh, our City fan, Mark Lillis. He'd scored pre-season for City, but uh, of course it would be a dream come true to actually score in your home debut, isn't it? Uh, although it wasn't overly straightforward, uh, this far from ordinary debut featured in an article in the following home game. Yeah, this is the magazine here, the, game, the next game afterwards. Uh, for the game against Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, they were the, one of the clubs that actually wanted to buy Mark when he came back to City. They were one of the clubs lined up to actually sign him, but obviously he stayed with City. So, uh, yeah, under the heading in here of a spot of anxiety, temporarily, uh, this is a feature on, on Mark Lillis on, on this interesting debut. So I'll just read this out and take up the story from, from the programme of what happened on that night. I mean, as I said, I was there. <laughs> My memory needs a little bit of prodding every now and then. But anyway, let's, let's read this article. It's just an interesting article on Mark as well, and obviously what happened. Mark Lillis had just finished one of the most ecstatic celebrations of his career last Wednesday night when he turned away from the Kipak stand acclaim and saw the ball he just thumped into the net was sighted back on the penalty spot. Uh, I couldn't believe it. The referee had ordered a retake, said Mark, his head still shaking with disbelief. The sturdy striker making his home debut kept his nerve. I badly wanted that goal. I felt a little bit nervous about going up to the spot and taking the kick again. I'd hit the original penalty, penalty so well that I would have preferred not to have the job of trying to repeat the deed he went on. But the retake was ordered. Barnsley referee, Trafford Mills, remember him, Trafford Mills? was unshaken by some mild protests and the gasp of amazement from a suddenly subdued crowd. Fact of the matter is that I saw Sammy McElroy stood inside the D of the penalty box and as one of the Leicester players also saw him encroaching and pointed it out to me, the grass. I wonder who it, well, I wonder who it was. Uh, I pointed it out to me, though I'd, rarely, I'd already seen it. It was too late to stop the penalty being taken because Lillis was on his run-up. 
but he tried he, but I have no alternative but to order it to be taken again, explained the official, whose fair mindedness mindedness has always been a feature of his approach to the ref's job. <laughs> Yeah, OK. Uh, that's when City pivot Mick McCarthy went running forward with words of assurance for his colleague in the hot spot. Mick just shouted at me to keep cool. I deliberately lifted the ball off the spot and replaced it to give me time to compose myself, said Mark. Then I whacked it to the same place, the right-hand side of the goalkeeper. It wasn't as well struck as my first attempt, but it went directly into the corner. The keeper dived the correct way, as he'd done on my first shot, but the pace and the placing just beat him. It was a relief. I was delighted, but it was nothing like my jubilation after the first kick. I think I did a war dance then. My first goal at main roll, the ground where I'd been a supporter as a youngster was always going to be important to me and it was despite it being a penalty mark continued it's now official that mark is the team's penalty taker they are so could do perhaps do with him now couldn't we really though the role was virtually thrust upon him by accident in pre-season we were on an isle of mantor he said when we received an award and Sammy McElroy threw the ball to me to take it, possibly because he'd seen me convert one or two in training, but perhaps if he hadn't walked into the D, it would be easy to take it, wouldn't it? There were no other takers, so I gladly cracked the ball home. When the, this one came up against Leicester, I didn't hear any other takers and I accepted the job. I enjoy taking a penalty. I missed my first one last season while at Huddersfield, though that was really my first full season as a team spot kicker. I converted sixth in the league and one in the FA Cup during the 84-85 season, he recalled. That was, with his, uh, that was after he recovered from his bad back, wasn't it? Mark may have survived his penalty anguish on a rain-sodden Wednesday night, but it wasn't as a story with a happy ending as Leicester stole away with the points in a 1-1 finish. Yet the strikers' view of the home performances and the outcome was not a despairing one. We played some good stuff, he said, and didn't have a lot of good fortune with our chances. I'm glad the first match at home is now out of the way. I didn't feel I did too badly. I classed my own efforts as reasonable with better to come. I had another souvenir from the match. I took an elbow on the head in the first half and the lump it has left is likely to stay there for a few days yet he ended so there you go so interesting uh yes uh, my memory i can't i can't remember i'm sure we were delighted when that uh obviously he scored the first penalty and then say it's a bit a bit of a shame it's a bit of a damn squid and as he said he said he did a war dance when he scored his first the first one and obviously he wasn't just wasn't the same when he scored it again and properly but uh it was uh certainly far from straightforward Ordinary debut, was it, uh, to sort of get a penalty and score? Uh, how he played generally, he said he was happy with it. I'm sure, I'm sure he was. I think, as, as City fans, we would have known his pedigree as well. Of course, we would. Uh, so, a great feeling and a, a great night. I mean, for any, any City fan, if you, if you score for your, your team, it's great, isn't it? And if you score on your home debut in front of the Kipaks uh, and the main road crowd, uh, not once, but twice, all right, only one county, but. Uh, Shows a lot of bottle as well, doesn't it? That to put it in the same spot. I mean, I, you know, I I've only ever took I mean, at my little level. I only ever took one penalty in my life. I was brilliant. I was brilliant at penalties in in uh, training, and I took one penalty uh, in a in a competitive game, and uh, it was saved. It was awful, and uh, I was in goal at the time, so I had to leg it back to the other end as well. So that was even more embarrassing. But hey, there you go. Uh, as I say, that's so why I can't say anything, but takes a lot of bottle obviously to say that penalty and put it in the right spot and score again that's fantastic uh okay it wasn't a win we drew 1-1 in the end but uh that sort of achievement i'm sure i'm sure he was as i said it perhaps dampened a little bit because he had to do it again but uh i'm sure it's only something 99.99999 percent of us never get that chance to do do it so a uh, chance to do that sort of thing for our for our boiled club so must have been wonderful of course, uh, Mark would go on to score a total of 11 goals that season and one League Cup goal as well, uh, operating as a number seven. Yeah, and he, he, he was City's top scorer. Uh, not the greatest season, although he, did not, he didn't sort of score or add to his tally after a 2-0 win over Spurs in mid-January. That's probably part and parcel of perhaps what led to him leaving us. He only stayed the one season, of course. And he also got to score a couple at Wembley, don't forget, for City. There you go. We sort of, I think, sort of, even I forgot about that till I was looking back at this. And uh, in the 5 4 defeat to Chelsea, of course. But uh, so not only did he score in front, obviously, obviously got, got a chance to score in front of his fans. He, he scored a few goals, but also a chance to score for City at Wembley. We, we can only dream, can't we, of those sort of things. And I'm, 
I'm sure despite, obviously, the results quite not quite going our way, it was still a wonderful, wonderful feeling. But as I said, he'd only get one season with us before moving on to uh, Derby County for the 1986-87 season. So Mark Lillis, yes, he's one of these guys where, because he was a local lad, I, 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 someone once told me that I actually played football with Mark Lillis uh, on, on a local park in Withington, but... Uh, I can't, in the same way, uh, someone told me I was also played football with Eric Nixon, uh, obviously, you know, but uh, I was a couple of years older, so or a year or two older, so I can't, I can't particularly remember, but uh, yeah, I'm sure I've seen Mark, if, you, if you're watching this, Mark, I'm someone I pointed out, for anyway, all the best, mate, and uh, I'm glad, I really enjoyed doing that little, little look at uh, Mark Lillis and his, uh, his dream home debut, and I'm sure it was, uh, so thanks for joining. It's very interesting, very slightly different, as I say, slightly different to the normal dream debuts we do. But uh, it's great to do a, a city fan, isn't it? I mean, a lot of these players become city fans, of course they do. But it's great to to do one who was a city fan, and that's absolutely fantastic. But uh, there you go. It took a while, didn't it? It took a while from his schoolboy forms to obviously talking about eleven years, was it, before between his school signing schoolboy forms and actually uh, playing for City. But uh, and he had a roundabout way of doing it. But he, he got to do it, didn't he, on the twenty uh, first of August, nineteen eighty five, against Leicester City at Main Road, of course. Thanks for watching. What are we going to do rest day? Have a great one. Catch yourselves, catch your friends, look at your family. It's more important. Let's all look after each other till we meet here again on the Citizen Channel. Or if you want to have a look, please have a look at my film and TV channel as well. I try and inform and entertain as best as I can on there. So please check that out. But if it's not, and if you meet back on here, that'll be fantastic. I only ask one thing. Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.